Hey everybody, welcome in that new video tutorial about the master slave applied to sticking arrows on character. Uh, that's a pretty uh, casual use case where you're doing an army, we are doing, you're doing some archery soldiers and you would like um, those arrows who fly around to stick uh, into the shields or other parts of the other characters. So this is the topic of today's video. The setup I'm having here is pretty casual. Is something we've seen uh, into previous uh, videos already that archery part is the same uh, mechanism that I had before. Um, so I've got uh, three different types in the scene. I've got the archery soldiers, which are the green one here. Um, I turned them as physics shape, but uh, they're actually, you know, real geometry of actual characters here. But as I'm going to play with physics, I just decided to turn all my characters to physics shape uh, display here. Uh, and uh, what we do, if, what they do in terms of behaviors is um, playing a shoot animation and uh, when some specific frame is rich, uh, we're emitting some characters from um, those characters. We're emitting some arrows from those soldiers. Um, I pump up slightly the numbers here. Uh, each single character is going to throw 10 arrows at the same time. So this is why we're having those uh, packs of arrows flying around. I just wanted to have plenty of plenty of arrows to just increase the chance that uh, at some point they will collide with the blue guys. Uh, obviously, if you want something more realistic, just bring that down to uh, one or something, some value similar here. Um, great. What else do we have? We've got the yellow entities, which are going to be my uh, actual arrows. So they're flying around here. And in terms of behavior, those arrows, they're um, getting physicalized first. So when they are emitted, when they are created, uh, they enter the physics engine and we apply a force on those. So we let the physics engine drive their positions here. And finally, I created an infantry soldier here. Um, so that's new, but nothing fancy. They're playing a walk animation from the character pack. And um, as the animation by default um, does not have that uh, you know that arm being raised on top of the head um, i just modified uh, that animation by bringing a set bone behavior so i wrote a couple of simple expressions i'm just adding a couple of offsets on the shoulder and the wrist so rather than having the shield on the side when they walk um, now they have their shield on top of the head protecting their head let's say so we'll use that as a collider for the arrows here Great, so let's get started uh, with our, our today's use case. So the first thing I, I really want to do here, and that's super, super important, is that whenever I play with master slaves, I want to specify in which order I want to update my entity types. So here are my um, arrows, they will be sticked onto my blue characters. So it means that um, they need to know what's the new posture at every frame of, the, of those blue characters. So the blue characters needs to be computed first. So if they're computed first, their animation postures is updated. And we read from the animation postures the new position of the arrow and apply the same deformation. So to specify in which order we want to uh, update the entity types, we're going to play with an attribute called uh, the slave level. So I'm going to uh, select my entity type node here, my arrow, and um, open the advanced attribute. And you can see that uh, we've got something called master slash slave level. And uh, the value is always zero by default. And the higher the value is, the latest that um, entity type will be updated. So if I put any value superior to zero, uh, so my soldiers will be zero, my arrows will be one. It means that my arrows, I'm, I'm going to be sure that my arrows will be computed. Uh, after my soldiers and that's super important because they're going to be sticked uh, on those soldiers so I need to know and I need to update those blue soldiers first. Great! Next I want to add my um, sticking behavior to my arrows here. So first the physicalized then the force and uh, I'm going to bring that uh, master slave behavior. So um, they get applied with the force and at some point they will do a transition to that behavior here. So that force behavior is just an impulse. Um, so it could run just for one frame if I wanted to. So I could change its default trigger, um, which is here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's remove all those guys here for the moment. Great. Um, his default triggers is false, um, but for real, if it 
runs for just one frame, that's good enough. So I could maybe turn it to true, and uh, what I could do is maybe put here a collision trigger. But the fact is, the master slave behavior here um, will be driven, driven, will be driving, sorry, uh, the arrow's position. But I also need to turn off the physics at some point. Um, so I need to have two behaviors here in parallel. So um, there's multiple ways of doing this, but in this setup, I would prefer like uh, set up my stopping trigger for my force behavior and just stop this as soon as my arrow is in collision with something blue with my anti-type here. So you will be able to make the transition to that behavior here and another behavior to turn off the physics. So maybe it's not really clear yet, but you'll see later uh, why I decided to go uh, that way. So what I want to turn uh, off when I want to cons configure here will be when um, when do we make the transition from here to there. Or maybe, you know what, I could even do something even more different. So um, so let's do something proper, you know what, it will, it will be even be better. So here, um, that behavior can run for just one frame. So what I could do is just turn it to true. true. Okay, great. And it means that first it will be physicalized, apply the force, and then you will switch to the master slave. But the thing is, we only want this to start uh, when uh, they are in actually collision with the blue guys. So I'm probably going to use a block to block the signal. So the block will be zero, zero frame. And I can use that condition here, and that will be better. So, okay, here my signal will be blocked, and uh, default is true. So I want to remove this and use maybe the collision trigger. And I just want to be able to pass this and go there if I'm in collision with something. So I'm going to use the collision trigger here. Um, I want to maybe check filtered my collision with some sp specific ID. And I just want to check right now if I'm in collision with something blue. So I'm going to uh, check what's the entity type ID of my blue characters. It's a two. So I'm going to say why am I in collision with something um, being two. Um, I will um, move out that block and play the master slave. And let's go into the master slave. So the master slave behavior has three different types. I'm having the static offset. So static offset means that you're specifying some specific offset between two characters. You're manually giving the offset, which can be scaled based on the scale of characters. Uh, so it means that this kind of mode can be used when you're doing, let's say, a, uh, maybe a cavalry soldier on top of a horse and you want to um, uh, constrain the two characters together. Uh, this is not exactly what we want to do here. We can have a closest entity. Uh, also, sometimes uh, you may want to be attached to the closest entity that you have. Let's say you do um, a traffic system and you want to have cars emitting passengers. When those passengers get emitted, you want them to be attached to the car they're actually, uh, which actually emit them. So you can use the closest entity to do so. And in our situation, we can use the freeze on collided. So it's going to check um, what's the actual uh, collision uh, between the two characters. And you will remember that collision and keep reapplying that collision uh, in terms of animation here. So when I select freeze on collided, uh, I'm having those uh, entity types and bone names I can play with. So I'm going to put my infantry soldier here map it here and the bone names right now are just going to stick with all the all the bones which are available in that character whenever they're in collision um, apply it so um, let's take a look we shouldn't see anything specific here but uh, we should at least to see when characters are in collisions together uh, let's say those guys here they're probably in collision uh, let's see what kind of behavior they're playing. They're playing the block and the reason for that is because... Oh, I know. Um, yes. So here a collision is clearly happening between uh, my arrow and my blue guy. Oh, not yet. Maybe. Let's see. Okay. Well, it was close. So probably a collision was detected. But we can see here the block didn't get out. Um, the reason for that is because my uh, physics environment, so let's see how does my physics environment looks like. I can go into my um, physics, lo physics locator, which is the one defining how does my uh, physics of characters looks like. And if we um, run the sim, uh, sorry, if we go into display, ask to draw the collision shape, so everything which is a physics object, we can see the arrows. Uh, which is expected, but those blue guys here, they don't belong to the physics. So if we try to compute some collisions with some blue guys who don't belong to the physics, it 
will not work because um, the physics engine doesn't know them, so it doesn't detect any collision with those. So we need to improve that graph for my blue guys. So I want to bring a physics node here, my physicalized node, uh, that can um, I can put a default trigger to true, so it turns uh, out right away. But I'm going to say now you're going to be kinematic, so you're going to stick still playing animation, but now you exist into the physics world. And as soon as I do that and I play the simulation, now you can see those shapes appearing, saying that the characters actually exist into the physics world. So that physics uh, display is pretty um, um, taking a lot of computer power. So um, I usually like open it um, for just a few seconds and um, for a few frames actually and turn it off when I can. And when you turn it on, turn it off, you need to rewind the simulation because it's uh, uh, gonna be created by the physics engine here. Great, um, so now my collision detection will be better, uh, probably. Let's check, uh, can we spot a collision? Uh, probably here, right? Oh, not really close to here. Is there a collision or what about that one here? He probably was in collision at some point. So who's being selected right now? Yeah, the thing. Oh, well, that one is obviously in collision. What's going on with that guy here? Oh, um. So if we click on that character here, apparently there's nothing running uh, at all. So there's no. There's no behavior at all, so there's that master slave, there's the block here, there's the master slave, which has a default of true. And um, yeah, for some reason it doesn't play any more behavior. Okay, that's curious. But anyway, another reason that uh, my characters are not stick is because the physics is still running of those ca on those characters. So we're having... Um, so we are saying that we want to attach those two characters together, but this physics is still running on those be on those characters, so the physics takes uh, over on top of those characters. So what we need to do is on those arrows, we'll need to turn off the physics. So I'm gonna bring a physics behavior once again, put it with the master slave. So when the block decide that there is a collision, it will play that uh, those two behaviors at the same time, and into the physics behavior. So the physics behavior can be um, used to bring the characters in the physics, but also bring them out. So we're gonna use the dephysicalized behavior to bring them out, and we want to turn that behavior off right away. So change its default trigger. Okay and uh, see if that's better now. So let's rewind the sim, play it for a few seconds, and uh, check if there are, yeah, there are some arrows here and there being attached to uh, some characters. Are they? What well, they de-physicalized, but yeah, they do. Okay, we can see here and there some uh, some arrows being sticked on characters, and uh, actually, it's not really obvious that. Um, yeah, it's not really obvious because there's so much, uh, so many arrows here and there. So what we're gonna do, and and actually, we've got some error messages saying that. Um, yeah, by the time we actually create a collision, uh, and by the time we freeze the characters, it looks like uh, they're not in collision anymore. So. Uh, a few tricks to apply here. So the first thing I, I'm gonna do is um, I'm probably gonna filter. Mm, okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is um, probably increase the frequency of the scene. Uh, right now I'm in uh, 25 FPS, um, but those arrows go pretty fast. So what happens is at some point we check if um, they're in collision. They are. So we decide to start some behaviors, but in the meantime there's a chance that they are not in collision anymore the time it takes to go from here to there. So it's just one frame, uh, but you know it's uh, super small objects going super fast with really high velocities and uh, the collisions may lose some precision. So what I can do is probably like increase the FPS of the scene. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still at frame one here and uh, I'm still having 500 frames there. So th the simulation will be slower, uh, obviously. But uh, my uh, collisions will be more precise, and that's probably what's more important here. 
and uh, I should get less error messages. And uh, yeah, I've got plenty of collisions here. Uh, I've got, uh, yeah, you can see here that guy has one arrow planted in the chest. Uh, that guy is uh, has one arrow. Can we spot some arrows being applied to the shield? Not that much. Not at all, actually. Oh, okay, I know why. So yeah, that guy has one in the arm, so we're gonna filter that, right? Um, so the first thing is, um, something really tricky, well, not tricky, but uh, you need to know that, uh, is that the set bone behavior, um, it's not really an animation behavior, it's like a procedural animation behavior. So by default, it runs after the physics, because sometimes you may want to apply an offset on top of the physics. But here, what I want to do is I want to play it before the physics, so the shields get detected, so that the actual offset I apply gets detected before uh, the physics run. So um, I need to go into my set bone behavior here and into the evolution mode. I need to say that it's before physics. So now my shields will be detected as being upper handed. So let's check. Probably I should now have some collisions with shields. And as the shields are, you know, a pretty big area here, there's a chance that uh, they may collide on it. So yeah, there's uh, one arrow here on the side of that shield here, and there's one arrow there on the side of that other shield which gets uh, through it. So what about if we want to keep only the one which are through the shields? So um, plenty of ways to actually do that, but uh, maybe what I can do is um, when I physicalize my blue guys, I'm gonna provide a specific collision ID. So let's provide it like a random number, like a 666. And I'm going to say that number will be applied only on the weapon left. So weapon left is my actual shield. So when I'm going to apply the physicalized behavior, I'm going to say I want to physicalize only the weapon L part, provide it with a, a specific ID. And when my arrow here will um, uh, start that uh, uh, sticking behavior here, uh, this is going to happen when my entity collision ID is set up to 666. And um, I guess that's pretty it. So uh, whatever other collision here uh, will be ignored. But uh, when uh, my arrows plant into something which has an ID of 666, so here it will be the shield, there um, should run into uh, the master slave behavior. So are there some characters having some uh, arrows in their shield? Yeah, there are a couple here and there. Well, there, okay, here, there, there. There are, plen there are plenty of arrows here, so it's pretty hard to see what's going on. Uh, but here we are. So we can filter afterwards. If we're not happy with those uh, collisions, we can maybe uh, kill the characters uh, because sometimes they're not really planted the right way. But uh, that guy here is planted through halfway uh, and uh, now is uh, sticking to the to the shield. So all the other collisions are ignored. So it's really up to you to decide maybe if uh, an arrow um, find a shield, you stick to it. If it finds something else, which is the armor, you just bounce on it, which is what's happening right now. If if it's able to uh, maybe um, uh, hit the neck or some skinny skin part of the characters, you can just trigger some physics uh, ragdoll behaviors. And um, that's pretty it. Maybe something I wanted to maybe ch do, because here it's, it's quite a mess, that scene here. Um, I guess I wanted to maybe uh, kill some, uh, kill the arrows if uh, they actually do not hit um, the shields. When they hit the ground, let's say, I would like them to kill, to get killed or get removed. So to do that, I'm probably gonna remove that block behavior. Um, and I'm gonna bring maybe a kill node here. And I'm gonna uh, drag another output from that character here and bring that off. So actually I'm gonna, yeah, that, that block node is maybe not so convenient. Maybe that was not such a good idea. So what I'm gonna do is reproduce the same trigger that I had before, or maybe I can copy it from um, here. Um, you could share it if you wanted to, or uh, it will not take me a long time to actually redo that again. So I'm gonna say, okay, if you're hitting a 
collision ID of 666, uh, you go out and um, um, stick to the shield. And if you uh, collide with the ground, so let's check what that ground is, um, you're gonna run the kill node. So that ground node here is a box I created. So it's just a Maya box here, geometry that I uh, converted as a crowd rigid body. So I just selected that uh, geometry here, press on that button here, created that node. Uh, that node, you can assign it with a collision ID of 667, let's say. And into the physics environment, um, by default, you got a default plane, which is right above the geometry. You can put that to known. Uh, so there's nothing else now uh, except that box you just created. So um, the default ground doesn't take over the actual ground that you created. So it's a 667 as a rigid uh, body ID. So I can go into ID, rigid body collision ID, 667. And uh, hopefully now it will less be a mess. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll just add a slight note. Uh, so let's see if my characters hit the ground. Yeah, they just disappear. So that's better now. So we'll be able to filter only uh, the characters which are hitting the shield. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's run that for a while. And you can see, yeah, those, uh, those arrows here are getting through the shield. So um, one uh, note you may have is, okay, it's, it's pretty uh, sweet. But uh, those arrows go way too um, deep into the shields. So this is because the collision detection and the way uh, the solving happens is um, is not within the same frame. So first we detect the collision, then we um, do master slave on it. So increasing the frequency of the scene, maybe going 100 FPS, will provide you uh, more um, you know more precision with the collision. Uh, because here, once again, this is really fast object, high velocity and super thin. So not always easy to compute those collisions properly. Uh, but I guess that helps uh, anyway. And you get, uh, you know, the phys the ID behind uh, the, the sticky arrows and uh, the master slave behavior. So let us know if you got any questions and uh, see you into the next uh, video.